Welcome to my Decade Retrospective in Film video series. This is a chance for me to go from 2010 up to the present, 2019, and talk about each year in film, at least my experience in film. I'll be discussing my honorable mentions, movies that I feel really need to be discussed but didn't quite make my top spot for that year. I will also be talking about my favorite bad movies. This whole series is meant to celebrate film, and one of my favorite movie-going experiences is also finding those wacky, crazy films that are misalignment between ambition and talent, and something just didn't quite line up, but you still got an entertaining movie anyways. They're both good and bad, and, and the good, good, bad mix that's impossible to describe, but is enjoyable nonetheless. I will also be doing my overlooked recommendation for each year. This is a movie that either didn't get the credit that it deserved at the time, hasn't been really talked about since, or it's maybe something I feel people haven't heard of, that I think is definitely worth talking about. And finally, I will talk about my favorite movie from each year. This is the main point for this video series. These will be the movies that I feel are prime examples of filmmaking and storytelling in the cinematic form, and is also something important to me. Something that I saw at the time, that reflected my life at the time in some way, reflected where I was at, and is also something I've revisited many times since then and still enjoy to this day. And with that said, let's get into 2010. So honorable mentions for this year go to Daybreakers, Troll Hunter, Kick-Ass, Best Worst Movie, Boy, and Tron Legacy. These are all movies that I really, really enjoyed, had so much fun watching. Have Sometimes I saw them when they came out, sometimes I've seen them in the years since, but just films that I think you really need to check out, I personally love, and are also really excellent films. That being said, the opposite of that would be my best terrible movie, which goes to Grown Ups. This is a movie for some reason my family watched a lot when it came out, and I think they genuinely enjoyed it. And it was a movie that I really did not think was good, but still captivating to me for some reason. I think just like, it's weird mix of like, cliche screenplay that they really tried to stick to, but also had these weird, you know, uh, improv scenes. And, but clearly the people making it were having a lot of fun. They didn't really care if you like it or not. And it's just a movie that captivates me and it, it, it is genuinely funny in other parts and it's just so unfunny that I still laugh at it in other parts and it's not a movie I can completely dismiss but it's not something I think is actually good or like at all representative of the talent on display so it's really a captivating film and is definitely representative of kind of the end of the Sandler era as in the 2010s he more went on to do weird Netflix movies I guess we're still kind of like this it's kind of lazy work with his friends movies. Regardless, let's move on to my overlooked recommendation, which is Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, a comedy horror film that you probably haven't heard of, but if you have, you probably love it because it plays on the tropes of horror movies and makes the usual hillbilly killers the good guys of these genuinely sweet and nice guys who just appear to be murdering these kids and really, you know, don't quite like these kids. You're not super mad that they're dying. And it's, it's really enjoyable. It's got some excellent performance, especially from Alan Tudyk, who has gone on to have a really good career in voice acting and has some good appearances here and there. You probably recognize him. And I really recommend this movie if you can stand the gore and you don't mind uh, kind of horror movies that are playing around with the tropes of the genre. And now, of course, the point of the video, my favorite movie of the year. And of course, I'm gonna start off this decade retrospective with an exception. This is the only year with two movies 2010 is actually a really special year to me, and it's really cool to get to start off this decade with this year. This is the year I feel I really started to get into movies, really started to pay attention to them, really started to learn about them. Now, I've done you know, movie reviews, and, I, and I'm an amateur film critic, and I really love movies, and this is the year I feel that actually really kick-started. And this, as personally, this year was a big year for me, because it's a year. At the end of 8th grade in May 2010, I learned I was going to be moving from my hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska to Springfield, Missouri. I had grown up in Lincoln, lived there since I was 1 years old, so 14 years there, all my best friends there, my entire life was there, and all of a sudden, right before my freshman year of high school, I learned I'm going to move. I wouldn't end up moving until the next year, but nonetheless, that summer was my final summer with my best friends, and this year we saw one of my two favorite movies of the year, Inception. This is a movie, at the time, I loved, saw it with my friends. We went gaga for it, it's got great action, it's, it's funny in pieces, it's really creative, and it's kind of a mind-bending movie. Really perfect for a 15 year old boy just getting into film. As I re-watched it recently, I found that I also I still really love this movie. And I realized that this is the movie that really got me into looking at directors. Before this film came out, I didn't really think a lot about who was behind a movie. But once I learned Christopher Nolan made this movie, and he'd also made 
um, things like the Dark Knight trilogy, and um, I would later find out Memento, and a movie I'd already watched called The Prestige, I freaked out, wow, this guy find all of these, and they're all kind of similar, and they're all really good. And that's how I started looking into directors and realizing those are the people that drive a movie. Obviously, film being very collaborative, something I would learn later, but at the time, like, wow, one person can make movies, and they're all kind of similar and good. You know, as I've gotten older, I've realized that you have to move beyond the surface of a film and see what's behind it, and, you know, Inception has a lot under its surface. It's got a lot to say, and it has a lot to say about the relationships that we have, especially romantic relationships, and, you know, the scars they leave, and how mistakes we make in those, we carry those with us, and if we don't address them, they can destroy us, which is something I had not experienced as a 15-year-old boy in 2010, and something I have experienced as a 24-year-old adult in 2019, and I really connected with that and realized that I really still love this movie, and it has stayed with me over the years, and has, the movie hasn't changed, but as I've grown, I've grown to see more in this film. And my other favorite movie of this year is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. When I first saw the trailers for this movie back in 2010, I thought that I would hate it. It just, you know, it would, Michael Sarah had kind of gotten, you know, over the hill at this point, and really a lot of oversaturation with him. He hadn't made a good movie in a little bit, and um, I didn't really know, as I said earlier, I didn't know about directors. I didn't know who Edgar Wright was, who had made movies I knew that I loved, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and I just didn't know he was behind it. And, you know, all the actors in this movie were not famous at the time. They are now, and now we know that Brie Larson and Audrey Plaza, and Anna Kendrick, and um, Brandon Ralph, and Chris Evans are all awesome actors, but at the time we really didn't know that. And this is a movie that they really shine in as supporting roles, and the, from the moment I saw this movie, once it was released on DVD, I watched it with my brothers, we all kind of just connected with this movie, but especially me, and just like, the video game elements of it, the acting, the story, the, uh, the use of original music, it's a movie that I just love and love more as the years go along. I listen to music all the time. It's really been influential on me on how I think about you can use visual elements in a film. Again, this is a movie that I think has a lot to say about relationships and how two people can come together and overcome their past and, and be better together, which is also something I didn't understand until I was in 10 as a 15-year-old boy, but I think really connects with me now. And yeah, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World of Movie, I loved instantly and have continued to grow in my appreciation of over the years, so thank you Edgar Wright for such a touching and exciting comedy action comic book film. So that was my experience of 2010 in film. Thank you so much for watching and we'll head over to 2011. And next, Honor Boy, go to Daybreaker, Legacy, Kick-Ass, and I'm missing one, Tron Legacy, and gosh, Truby, Tron Legacy, I can't, Boy,